One of the most concerning issues the grains industry faces these days is chemical spray drift. The good news is there's plenty happening to make sure proposed changes to spray buffer zones are based on fact and science. Since the 2010 implementation of government proposed regulations requiring new pesticides be assessed for spray drift and new chemical labels might prescribe mandatory no spray buffer zones, spray drift has been a hot topic for the agricultural sector. So much so, a National Working Party on Pesticide Application made up of growers and industry representatives was formed to ensure scientific accuracy underpins any decision-making process. For me is that technology without knowledge is not an appropriate licence to operate. As a Working Party member, GRDC has given support to a number of research projects, the findings and recommendations of which will assist the NWPPA in its representations to the Australian Pesticides and Veterinary Medicines Authority. The APVMA approves chemical labels and the directions for their use. This University of Queensland facility is conducting one such research project, examining the variables that impact spray drift. We've known for a long time that nozzle selection, pressure, formulations, all have an impact on spray quality uh, and what's happening in the field. That work actually allows us to quantify that so that when we sit down with policymakers to talk about um, how they've determined uh, you know, mandatory buffer zones and whether or not they're even appropriate to have mandatory buffer zones, um, that science is the thing that, that underpins it. By examining all aspects of the spraying process, the research team will then be able to determine which combinations give the most effective coverage with minimal drift. We want to look at the nozzle, the pressure, the angle, the speed of the sprayer, how fast is he driving or flying if it's an aircraft, the pesticide, the herbicide and the adjuvants that they add. And then the meteorology is important too, so we need to look at the temperature, humidity, wind speed, wind direction. Droplets with a diameter of less than 100 microns or a tenth of a millimetre, known as driftable fines, are the problem. They're the ones that drift in the wind and, and do the damage. So, so farmers need to know what percentage of fines they have when they're using a particular nozzle with a particular tank mix at, at a certain pressure. Using a diffraction laser in a wind tunnel, the team can determine the median droplet diameter and the percentage of driftable fines for various combinations of nozzles, spray mixtures and environmental conditions. The challenge is getting that balance between a droplet size that's small enough to provide good coverage but large enough to prevent spray drift. One of the key areas we're working on here for, for GRDC is to build up a database of all of the different nozzles, all of the different tank mixes that an applicator could use to help them decide what's best for their application because every spray is probably going to be different. Information that in the short term will help the work of the NWPPA and in the not too distant future be available to grain growers. We hope to have it available as like a mobile phone app so the farmer can just, if he's out in the paddock, he can just sort of put in his, uh, his herbicide, his, uh, his nozzle type and uh, the pressure he's going to use at it and it'll give, tell him what his um, spray quality will be. The app's on schedule for release in the next year or so. Results from this research should produce improved spray drift management in the future. But what should growers be thinking about right now to reduce spray drift? One way is to not spray when the wind's blowing towards a sensitive area because drops only go where the wind takes them so wind direction is key. Another key is the height of the boom so don't take your spray boom high. If you can look at putting a cover over the boom if, you, if there is significant wind that could move, move the droplets the cover will effectively stop the wind. And then another key is not to spray when there's no wind when you may have a temperature inversion. Chemical spray users adopting such recommendations and researchers being able to provide the NWPPA with quantifiable data is what's needed to persuade policymakers to revise down the proposed increases to spray buffer zones. Exactly the kind of data Andrew Hewitt's team is providing. So it's no longer a contest of attitude or, or 
you know, my opinion is that you don't need to do that. None of that applies anymore. We've actually got hard scientific data that the regulators can rely on as well.